Hi guys, like I said, uh, life is full of unexpected things. I'm here at Freedom's Door and I'm gonna interview a good friend of mine. His name is Yuha Lintunen. So we're gonna interrupt his time here, but I think it's for a good reason. I want you to know somebody who has breathed life into me and continues to breathe life into others. So here's my friend. Hi there, Mr. Hey. Yuha Lintunen. Hey, Fred, how are you? Good, thank you. I don't mean to interrupt, but you know, I'm wondering if uh, you wouldn't mind sharing with some of our viewers here on Rua Breath of Life YouTube channel about real people with real stories. Yeah. I would like to hear your story this morning. I would love to share some of my uh, thoughts and uh, what's happened in my life and how I've been have life breathed into me from where I came from uh, to where I am today. Look at that smile, it, hey! It, uh, the breath of life comes from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, where I came from was addiction, drug addiction and alcoholism. And uh, almost 13 months ago, well, as a matter of fact, 13 months ago today, I checked into Freedom's Door. I was broken. I was, I was uh, on a dark path in my life, destroying my life with drugs and alcohol and the collateral damage I caused in my own family, in my own life. I hated myself, I self-loathed myself and then uh, I came to the crossroads in my life. I had dug the hole deep enough that I had to have something different. Something had to change in my life. And I finally surrendered to, uh, to Jesus and everything, I mean everything changed. So. Well, Mr. Lynn Tunin, if you wouldn't mind, I have some specific questions I'd like to ask you. So with that, I am going to present these questions to you the same way we interview a lot of people on Ruah Breath of Life, and that is what it means to have life breathed into us. So now let's see what Yuha has to share with us, my friends. Well, my friend, the question of the day is, what does it mean to have life breathed into you? It's a big and a valid question in my life because uh, when I was breathing life out, it was horrible, black darkness, self-pity, self-loathing, self-centered, self-willed, self-indulgent, selfish. And uh, one of the key people in my life has been my mom. Christian woman continued to pray for me in my addiction and a real integral part in my life has been Jesus Christ. When I finally surrendered my will to God's will and I allowed Jesus to back into my life, everything, and I mean everything changed. I'm a praying man so I spend a lot of time at this place that you see here in the morning. This is where I start my day. I come here to read, to pray talk to God I have my daily devotions that I spend time with I want to learn what God has for, in store for me in my life and Jesus breathed life into me I came from darkness and I walked into his marvelous light awesome it's been it, it's been quite the journey and in this in the midst of my storms of my life I peeled off the layers of onions that were were detrimental to me and uh, one of the teachers here at Freedom's Door, where I'm still at, today's my 13th month clean and sober. Right on, today's brother. Now. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an incredible journey, but in the storms of life, I've clung to, hung on with both hands to Jesus. And it seems that in some of those storms, it's like a hurricane. I've been standing in the eye of the hurricane, calm, serene, at peace not understanding fully well of what's going on in my life and what happens, what's, what's going on with the storms. Learning through humility and through to humble myself before God that He has a greater plan in store for my life. Yeah. The restoration, the reconciliation, the renewal, uh, the redemption of first and foremost my, my personal life and then uh, it just Sometimes it's hard to put into words undeniable, inexpressible love, peace, contentment, joy that comes from knowing that I have a higher power that's in charge of everything. The creator of the heavens and the universe gave his only son, Jesus Christ, so I may live. 
because I was dead in my transgressions and my sins, and, and I followed the rulers of the kingdom of the year, and it's by his mercy and his grace that I've come to this point in my life. Um, With, if I don't mind interrupting, I'm gonna push him a little bit further. Yuha, the, some of the key words that I'm picking up are redemption, sort of this idea of, you know, bringing life back into somebody who was so broken and so down and out. Um, is there is there a particular group of people or uh, books or music or what what types of things are breathing life into you you know what is it particular that fires you up that gets your soul on fire to breathe life into you uh, music first and foremost for me uh, it when especially praise and worship music uh, I call it my face leaks because I'm in such joy that I weep openly and I'm not ashamed of it. I have a very close friend of mine that brought me to Freedom's Door. His name is Art. Uh, my mother, um, uh, the church life itself, Freedom's Door, uh, Trinity Church, Emmanuel Church, uh, Evangel Church, KGF Church, uh, listening prayer. Prayer and Proverbs in particular in the morning at Freedom's Door every day. What five, What is Prayer and Proverbs you're talking about? Uh, prayer and Proverbs is, uh, we read the book of Proverbs. So for example, today is the 20th of February. Yeah. Uh, we would read the, the 20th, the 20th proverb for the day. The men we sit and we pray in the morning uh, audibly, each one taking their turn. Cool. And we read the Proverbs uh, uh, verse by verse, everybody taking the turn uh, sequentially. And then if the Holy Spirit uh, prompts you to speak on something that might have jumped out at you, and it tends to, sometimes I think I might be the only one sitting in the room because every <laughs> time I, I read something or I hear uh, a sermon or, or somebody's breathing life into me, it could be a pastor, it could be my friend Frederick who's filming this uh, <laughs> video right now, uh, the, the men at Freedom's Door, my own family, my children, my grandchildren, uh, they all breathe life into me. I've come alive in Christ. It is Christ that lives in me, not me. It, it, some people say, "Oh, you found the, you know, the Jesus card," and I, I'm, I, if I have to say, I'm okay with that because um, <laughs> I, uh, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol, and now uh, they say, "Well, you're addicted to Jesus." Well, praise God for that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> from where I was to where I am now, oh my gosh, this is. I don't understand how it works, but I do know that the power of prayer when I pray for something, uh, it's, and it's not necessarily for me. Uh, uh, I pray for the reconciliation of my family first and foremost to Jesus Christ because they will come to know, not because I say something to them, it is because the Holy Spirit speaks to their, right. speaks to their soul. They, they just speak life into them, and it's got nothing to do with you. It's not about me. It's about the transforming power of Christ. I'm sitting here. Um, I'm living proof that there's something greater than myself that directs and guides my life. See, and for you friends that don't know, I met this guy by chance or maybe by divine appointment. I believe that God put him in my path, in my life, to breathe life into me. And that's where we're going to go next, because this is my favorite question, is now when you start to have life breathed into you, you know, you ha we've talked about this before, this idea of the word ruah, breath of life. You know, we get life breathed into us, but it can't stop there. We, 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 we are compelled to breathe life out. And I'm interested, you know, what is the, the big guy upstairs doing in your life? How do you breathe life out into other people? Because I've heard family, relationships, your friend Art, these churches you go to, some music, these are things breathing life into you. But now how do you turn that around? How does life come through you ha? Breathing life into others is, is uh, it comes naturally for me. I, um, I, I love to talk, of course. Uh, people have told me when I was a kid, <laughs> No one, you know, I talk a lot and then no one listened and now I continue to talk and no one listens, but I don't believe that to be true. No, uh, breathing no life, way. Uh, as I've come to know Jesus, my Lord and Savior, uh, the Bible is very clear on teaching me to, to um, 
it, it comes naturally. You're compelled to tell people <laughs> of what's going on in your life. You're, it, it, it's just like somebody's uh, turned the pilot light on from the furnace to a blazing fire in it. And, and, and to le uh, what I've learned in this whole process is that, that uh, uh, it's not about me. It's about what I can do for others, loving on others. The I love the that. Christ, yes. Loving people. Yes. Uh, and it and and I don't I don't even know sometimes why I'm compelled to love someone but when someone is placed in front of me for that moment in that moment at the moment it is of God from God and and for God it is a godly thing to do uh, we're all human beings uh, I've, uh, Frederick and I've had an opportunity to discuss what it means to be we're all humans God wants to reconcile the entire planet to himself it doesn't matter what your walk of life is what your color of your skin is what what you may think or may believe or may not believe but um, breathing life especially into my children and my grandchildren yes it yeah. is not by the words that I speak it is by the actions that I take and I demonstrate that there is transformational power possible and that comes from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, I love loving on people because when I was in my addiction it was all about self what's in it for me yep. what can I do and I didn't care what people thought I, I it was all about the high the the, the drunk the, the drinking buddies and now it's all about loving on people in such a way with passionate love you know my friend used to say to me Randy used to say, he says, you how when you smile, your eyes smile. <laughs> and the, the, uh, I love the white <laughs> pupils of my eyes because uh, in my addiction, it was they're dark and yellow and dingy. And uh, right. now it's, it's, it's the reflection. People can see through the windows of the soul. The window eyes. to the soul, the soul baby. Your eyes and they can see that there's what's going on. Like, what? who are you and where did you come from? You know, and I want what this guy's got. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for that. You know, it, 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 my love affair with Jesus is first and foremost. In my addiction, it was all about me. Now God is at the helm of my life. And and uh, that zeal, that, that yearning that I have to get into God's Word, to teach me, to mold me, to shape me, uh, that's where we're going with this. It, it, it's, um, I have nine devotionals, and, I, and when the storms come, I've, I've trained myself, or God has prompted, I'm put on my heart to go to my room, uh, quiet, and then open my Bible and read it audibly. So when I read the words of truth that come from the word, it's a living, breathing entity in my life. It, it, it calms my spirit. So that's where it's at. I love reading life into others as I've been so richly blessed. I can, uh, it is my duty, my honor, and my privilege to uh, breathe life into others. And with that, I would like to ask one question because I know this guy. What is the fishing boat? Oh, the fishing boat. Well, Jesus said that we're going to go out and fish for the souls of men. I have, I was blessed with a little car. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, as I go to these groups, the prayer, you know, whatever group it is, church group I go to, I bring men with me because they want to come with me and there's room in the car. Awesome. So we, we pile everybody in <laughs> and the fishing boat, oars at the ready, out the window. <laughs> And uh, we row our way over to the next venue of where life is being breathed into us so we can breathe it out into others. <laughs> See, I love that because when I first came to this recovery center and I met you, Ha, huh, I was like, you know, kind of, I was shy. And this guy opened up to me and like, I'm a hard shell to crack. And just his smile, his character, his attitude, even in the middle of going through his own junk and wrestling with God, he still had a way of touching my life. And so he would invite me out and eventually I said, yes, we have to decide. We have to make a choice to go. If someone offers you a ride in the fishing boat, how do you say no? And I got to go to, you know, like music. We'd go singing at the church. We'd go to meetings and different groups and we would have wisdom and knowledge and life poured into us through people and through music. And just the way it happens is awesome. But I've seen this guy go out and work with the homeless and hug people and buy people meals and coffees and he won't tell you. He is not going to toot his own horn, but I've seen the hands and feet of love come through this man as he breathes life into the world. So my friend Yuha, as we sign off here from the YouTube channel, Ruah is the breath of life. You know, this is real people, real stories. What message do you want to leave with our viewers today? There's a hope out there, uh, a sense of the hopelessness that is in the world and of the world is not 
what it was meant to be. God's love, God's mercy, God's grace through the blood, shed blood of Jesus Christ can bring hope to your life. I'm living proof that when you make that choice, and it is a choice you have to make, you come, I came to the crossroads in my life and I chose Jesus because Jesus pre-chose me. Right. I didn't even know that I was on this journey and the journey continues and as awesome. the days go by, praise God for that. All Amen. the glory goes to God because it's not about me, it's about what it is we can do for others. And that's like, I love Frederick's whole concept of Ruah. I love this word because my name is Yuha and then it's <laughs> Ruah. <laughs> yeah, I want to go Ruah, you know, I'm going to breathe life into you, whether you like it or not, brother, I'm going to love you, even if you hate me, I'm still going to love you, if you cut me a thousand it. pieces, I'm, every piece is going to love you, because that's what that I'm called That is so do. good. Well, my friends, there you have it. You can chop this guy up into a thousand pieces, and he'll love you a thousand different ways. So we're going to let him get back to his time at the cross here, where he is breathed into by God above. The big guy upstairs breathes life into him. So we thank you, Ha, and we'll see you again next time on the YouTube channel Breath of Life where we talk to real people with real stories. Thank you for blessing us today with your presence. Here we are.